Hey, hey, everyone, and welcome to the Abundant CEO Private Practice Boot Camp. Um, we are officially on a bonus day. And so I want to say one, thank you for tuning in. And I want to send a special um, level of gratitude for everybody on YouTube, Facebook, and on Instagram, and my podcast who have tuned into the entire last four days of last week for the boot camp. And so um, we've been getting a lot of reviews, whether it be in the DM, whether it be uh, via our text line or on Instagram and on YouTube. And I'm just super grateful for those of you who have tuned in and just receiving so many positive aha moments and people taking action with creating their niche statement in their private practice. So today's topic is all about cash flow. OK, and I thought this would be a great topic because this is something that we're going to add in to our uh, DTA cohort for this January 2023 cohort. We're really excited about our guest today. Um, we'll give you an overview in terms of what is cash flow? What does it mean to understand cash flow as a business owner? And then more importantly, as it relates to this boot camp, why do private practice owners, not entrepreneurs, need to um, understand their cash flow for the success of their business? Now, of course, per usual, um, if you have not already, went over to drtk.com forward slash links. I'm going to go ahead and put that over there. Um, up here, erase the workbooks and wait list is over. DTA is officially open as of today. We have been welcoming students already. And so I am super, super grateful. If you are um, tuning in on Instagram, just click the link in the bio and go ahead and sign up for DTA. Now, this is one big question that I've received. And I believe that this answer that I gave a lot of people actually helped them understand um, DTA. A lot of people didn't go back and potentially watch day four. I'm highly encouraging you to watch day four of the boot camp, and this is why. Beyond the interview we had with the clinician, we actually did a private practice assessment so that you can grade yourself to determine where you stand in your private practice. And then we had a guest speaker, and then I took you behind the scenes. I actually showed you the portal, and then I also went um, through our framework to walk you through what you can expect to learn, and then, of course, you have to execute what you learn in our program. All right, so go back and watch day four. So without further ado, all right, before she come on and introduce herself, because if y'all thought that I was extra, you know, I already gave y'all forewarning, she about to be hella extra. <laughs> and some of y'all already know her. Uh, but um, this is the clinical, the, okay, clinical and financial uh, psychologist that I know, the best one, right? I call her my BBP. And we initially were calling ourselves throughout grad school, BBD, beautiful black doctors, because it was all before of us, you, you feel me? Um, out of 60, a cohort of 60. <laughs> but as we maneuver through licensure, joining masterminds together, building and scaling our businesses together, um, all of a sudden we realized we should really own that mental health title. So we changed it about five years ago and we are now known as a uh, BBP, beautiful black psychologist. All right. So I'm going to bring her on, Dr. Roche. Hey. Hey, everybody. Hello, <laughs> Dr. TK. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So give them a little intro to who you are, what you do, where you at. Cause you know, we've had some people from your area actually come on into DTA. Okay. Okay. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Roche Brown, but I'm also known as the doctor of rethinking because I help people to remix their thinking so they can make money, manage money, and what? Multiply their money. So if you're trying to do that, you want to make some, manage it, and multiply it, baby. You better put some dollars in the chat right now or on the replay. I just want to see like, if y'all trying to make some money. You wouldn't even be rocking with Dr. TK if you're not trying to make some money because she's all about abundance and abundance in all areas, right? Not just money. However, we know we got to get some money in this game to really live this lifestyle that we want, right? But the biggest area is managing the money. Let's keep some of the money that we have, right? That's where our struggles are a lot of times. And then we want to multiply it. We want our money to have money babies because that's what we're trying to do up out here. You see how I got the dollars on. I'm ready for y'all. I'm ready for y'all today. Let's get our cash flow. I see some dollar um, bags, right? 
She wants banks upon banks. I see it. I see it in the comments, you guys. So um, let me tell you where I'm from. I come from East Oakland, right? I say deep East Oakland. Y'all might know Keish Cole, too short. That gives you some other things to understand it. But I can be a little bit more refined now because our vice president, Kamala Harris, is also from Oakland, right? We only have a little difference there, you know? So we come from all kinds of areas. Um, but I, I definitely am from deep East Oakland, came from, you know, a regular uh, family style of, I guess, dysfunctional families. And my community, you know, was substance abuse and um, people who were struggling and had a scarcity mindset. That's where I came from. Oakland. Hey, somebody is from Oakland. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? What part of Oakland you from? You know what I'm saying? Name your set. I ain't even about that life like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not even going, you know, I'm about it, but I'm not about it. Hey. Okay. So <laughs> what I am saying is, um, you know, thank you. Thank you. I'm loving y'all energy. Hey, who, who's Taiwan? Wanika, Taiwanika. I, I'm just loving you. I'm loving your, uh, all that you're giving right now. But I do come from the Bay Area, and um, I've actually been a licensed clinical psychologist since woo, since 2009 is when I became licensed. But I've been doing the work since 2006. So I actually got um, became a um, psychologist when I was 25 years old. So I was really young. I met Dr. TK in graduate school at the time. Um, we built a connection because it wasn't that many of us anyway. Um, but we built a stronger bond because we were just relatable in who we are. Um, so even though she, we always say that we, um, you know, Dr. TK and Dr. O'Shea from the Bay to LA, we taking over. You know what I'm saying? Take over. <laughs> I've, been, <laughs> I've been on mute this whole time, but I'm like, let, 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 Lord. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm saying? Take it over. <laughs> um, but uh, that's, I mean, like, you want to know any more about me right now or? Um, well, so let's do this because what we've done in previous interviews is that I wanted them to see how different therapists do different walks of life. And so before okay. we get into cash flow and then also talking about the journey of investing in ourselves, because I think that's important because some students yeah. that are newer to me, they haven't heard my full journey outside of podcasting because I okay. wanted to focus just on the boot camp. So okay. can you talk a little bit about um, different categorical places that you've worked Okay. And then what you're currently doing now so they can see how we diversify our portfolio oh, using our mental health expertise. Yes. So I pretty much, you know, like I said, I've been working um, since 2006. So I've worked in all kind of areas of psychology. You know, I started off in like working in group homes um, with, you know, emotionally disturbed children, you know, doing restraints. Anybody ever been in that experience? Um, so I started there. Um, then I started working in high schools. And so I actually worked in, um, if you guys know about the Bay Area, so Richmond High, Kennedy High Schools. Um, I actually have also worked in Oakland at um, like Fremont High. So I was doing a lot of like school-based health centers, um, working with um, people there. Um, I then also moved into, because I wanted some diversity because I was working mostly with children. I was so young when I got started. So being so young, I was kind of scared to work with adults, honestly. Right. Because I was like, oh, my God, I don't have a lot, enough life experience. Matter of fact, somebody told me that I already had the fear. And then uh, 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 I was working with the high school students and the grandma was like, she don't have enough life experience to work with us, you know. But I was like, I know how to work with your child. And that's all that matters. Right. And then, then I like poked her in the heart and she started crying. I was like, see, I'm a winner. You know what I mean? You don't even know it. It's not about my age. Right. I know what I have inside of me that I can prick uh, on other people. Um, but. I started there, but I decided I wanted to work with some adults. So I actually started um, wo working at a place called Berkeley Mental Health. And what it did inside of Berkeley area is that we actually did 5150. So I would do mobile crisis teams. I worked with um, very closely with um, the police department, actually had the walkie talkies to be saying like, MH 10 4 10. Like I had, a, it was really cool. Um, so I did that for a little while. Um, I also worked in um, a more affluent um, white area, right? Because a lot of times as African-American therapists, we're like, oh, we're only working with underserved. But I wanted to know how, you know, a diverse, uh, um, a, you know, diverse crowd in the communities, how do they operate? And so I was in a more like, it's more white affluent area, working with them, just seeing how that was going to go, worked in juvenile halls as well um, for a little while. Um, then I worked... I don't know where else have I worked. I worked everywhere. Like, well, I know you've done, if, like, so 
Oh, definitely yeah. clinical, I would say, because so, that, that's why I'm like, when I be going on a list, I'm like, look, I forgot. So all I know where I, where I haven't worked, geriatric. <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've like, worked everywhere. I mean, worked with foster youth, did community-based therapy, right? Rolling mm -hmm. around, saying, jump in my car, let's get some therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I've so done you opened that. up your private practice, right? Shortly after, like, part-time? Yeah, so I also had a private practice. I was serving, um, you know, evaluating veterans. Um, mm -hmm. I was also... Mm -hmm going to prisons, actual prisons, San Quentin, Folsom, uh, you know, some of the prisons that are out here. And I evaluated inmates for the conditions of their parole. Um, so I also did that for like a few years as well. Um, I was a professor. So I actually was a professor, um, you know, working um, for undergrad as well as graduate school students. Um, I was the, um, I'm a, psycho, a, a statistics teacher, right? People hate statistics, but I used to teach statistics, um, which led me to become the dissertation coordinator as well at the school. So I help people with getting their dissertations completed, um, particularly understanding, you know, how to design, um, you know, the quantitative piece of their dissertations. What about, um, you? weren't you the trainer director? Yeah, I was also the director of training as well. So like I actually did that um, at the school. So I was the DOT at the school, helping people get into their practicum sites. Um, I was an interim chair as well at one point <laughs> there. Can I, can I say something about that? Because yes. we talked about circles of influence. And I just want to yes. highlight, I think it was, I think I was teaching in LA at that point because I was teaching yes. up Europe going back and forth flying every week. <laughs> yes, right, so right. when I started teaching at LA, let me tell y'all the benefit of being connected to the right people. So I was, um, and I think you came to my class one day and I like yes. had you kind of speak to them, but I spoke of you before you got there. Yes. So a lot of our students at the time, um, they were in an MFT program and LPC. And I was teaching, I think that semester family systems or something like that. Yes. And so um, a lot of them start having anxiety around choosing practicum because practicum yeah. is free, but you're getting hours. And they were like, how do I get like sites and all those things? Yeah. And so I said, well, I can tell you how to get a site, but I've been out of school for a while, you know, but mm -hmm. let me tap into my connection, which is my friend. And she happens yeah. to be the DOT in yeah. the Northern campus. Cause that's where I used to work. So they were like, oh my yeah. God. And then it was so nice because once you, um, were visiting me, I said, Hey, would you mind coming to talk to my students? Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to highlight, learn how to, we talked about this on day one and two, collaborate with yeah. people in your community, because it was a free thing. She was kind of just visiting me. I think you were out yeah. here probably for a mastermind or something, yeah. but it put who I made an impact for at ease because right. I gave them a warm handoff just by letting them ask her questions for 30 minutes during our four hour class lecture. Yeah. I mean, even to go back to circles of influence and, um, you know, why it's so important to really connect yourself with the right person. Um, I often say that, you know, you take on the pace of those that, that are around you. And the reason why I came up with that was mainly because I saw it in my life. Like whoever I was connected to really changed the trajectory of my life. And so, for instance, like with being connected with Dr. TK, who Y'all been with her for whatever, three days or, you know, doing a boot camp with her. So you guys realize how organized, how energized, how passionate she is about things. And so imagine her being your friend. Right. So y'all just take that in and put the imagination of her as your friend. And so I'm come, going into school and she's the one who already knows when our assignments are due. Now, I, I will have to admit I am more <laughs> a procrastinator person. I'm probably not going to get that assignment due until the couple of days to maybe the week prior, if it's a long assignment. Um, but she knew it two and three months in advance, right? So even my first year, we talking about our dissertation. What you think your dissertation topic going to be? Now, keep in mind, we're friends. So we might be going to the club and we dancing, but on the way there, we might be talking about something, you know? So think about that, because that means that my environment was always kind of thinking about it in not a real anxious way, just kind of natural um, part of my environment. So that really helped me, um, you know, um, for us getting out of grad school very quickly. You know, Dr. TK was the first person to defend her dissertation. I was the second. Right. So if you have that connection, you're going to always kind of keep on growing in that way. And then talking a lot more about um, even how I became a professor. So like I said, I was I was professor for undergrad, graduate, master's level and as well as um, at SID level and dissertation and DOT, all because Dr. TK was a professor already and she was going to LA and couldn't teach her class. I don't know if you remember that, but that's why I was well, I remember right? I could, so to give everybody a full perspective, when you're passionate about something, you will do a lot of things that you probably would never think that you would do. Right. When I moved back to LA, 
I was, the Superman flights was probably $29 each way now, let's yeah, be clear. Not, not but, saying. and I was paying for this out of my pocket. The school was not paying for this. Yeah. I was flying up to the Bay Area every six days. I would, mm -hmm. I would work in the jail overtime the night before. I would fly up there the day of my class, run the risk of my flight running late, which happened, which is how Dr. Roche ended up being pulled in because one of my flights was canceled. Yeah. I would teach that night and then I would fly back the next morning. Yeah. And what I think what ended up happening, I asked you to cover one of my classes. I'm like, yes. I, I can't make it. <laughs> That's what happened. I covered one of her classes and I did a phenomenal job, of course. Right. But she gave me all everything to, to talk about. Um, I just had to bring my energy to it. And from there, they um, she even actually said, scripted out, said like, hey, tell them that you really did you did you like it? I was like, I did like it. She's like, well, script out an email. I'll read over the email and then send it over to them. This is how much she was like. Yeah. I was like, OK. And so I scripted out the email, told them that I really enjoy teach, you know, standing in for Dr. TK. And if they had any more opportunities, let me know. And they did. It actually took a year from that point. But a year later, they said they did. And when I say like we were making money hand over fist at that time, just even giving y'all some understanding, like our classes, we was making twenty two hundred, almost three thousand dollars every class. And they were every five weeks and we were teaching like two classes at a time. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just just put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy um, what we were so, able to do. So let me ask you, because I know that. We've had one particular conversation over and over again, especially when we're with my mastermind students. So let me like dive in and cash flow, like just for this part and then we'll yeah. back up. Yeah. Um, a lot of therapists have a job yes. or they've had jobs. Can yes. you talk about coming into all this money, uh -huh. having other streams of income like W-2s, starting mm -hmm. a private practice part-time, but then what you've seen <laughs> is mm -hmm. some of our students have jumped ship but they're, they become dependent upon those multiple streams of income, not realizing that one of them is about to disappear. And then yeah. when they go into private practice, uh-oh. Oh, oh yeah. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let me break that down because I, I do talk to a lot of students and notice this a lot. So what tends to happen, and just kind of giving you some numbers to really um, understand it. Let's say at your current job, you're making $5,000, right? Then you go into private practice, you're working less, and you make another 5000 Now, the natural tendency of most people, just psychologically, when it comes down to money, is they're going to start spending $10,000, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm making this extra money. So let me start spending like I'm making this extra money. Maybe you're going on more traveling. Uh, maybe you, you know, maybe it's designer purses that you start to buy, um, you know, other things. So you, you create a lifestyle that is $10,000 a month. Then you're like, well, I'm doing so good in my private practice. I'm already making as much as I'm making at my job. So you're like, I don't like it there anyway. That's what tends to happen. And then you say, I'm leaving. And then when you leave, you don't, you forget that you actually have built a $10,000 lifestyle and your mind is sitting there thinking like, oh, well, I'm making the same. So you're thinking like, oh, I'm good. But when you leave your job, you've lost $5,000. So now you have a $10,000 lifestyle, but only bringing in 5,000. Now you're coming from a desperation kind of place, trying to make money in your private practice. It's a complete different experience to be like, hey, I'm making some extra money on the side, making some extra money on the side to com compare to this is the money that I have to depend on. It feels different. And when you're in a place of desperation, just from a like mindfulness, attraction, manifestation um, state, what tends to happen is harder to attract good type of clients. And then you'll find yourself having either clients you don't really like, you know, that's going to make you feel upset that you're even working this job. You're going to feel burnt out. I was just talking to someone not too long ago, and she, I think she caught you on the boot camp as well, who was talking about working for a company. I won't say the name of the company, but working for a company. And she was working like seven, seeing seven clients a day making $35 um, for each client who showed up. Imagine how mm -hmm. you can get, get burnt out with that kind of work. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So uh, I always tell people when they're going to leave their job, definitely have some reserves, you know? So we talk about emergency funds, um, you know, for your personal expense or, you know, we call it abundance funds for your personal, but you need to have some reserves for your business. So when you're deciding to leave, what you want to actually do is start to put $5,000, maybe having up to three to six months 
to allow yourself some ramp up time in your private practice and some comfortable ramp up time, not that desperation kind of ramp up time, if that makes sense. Right. So you want to definitely put that together. And even if you're starting your private practice just right now or you're in the early phases, start right now, starting to not even act like that money even exists. You know, live in a life where you're living below your means. So if you're making five thousand at your W two job and you're making five thousand at your private practice, maybe pay yourself a thousand, maybe even two thousand, just to have a, a paycheck coming in from your private practice, and only live at that seven thousand dollar range, mm -hmm. making sure that you're building up the reserves that you need. Why do you think it's important to? Because we stress this in the academy, but there are a lot of people who are going to watch this that may or may not join the academy, but I still want yeah. everybody to be abundant no matter what. Why yeah. do you think it's important mindset wise to get in the habit of paying yourself, no matter if it's a dollar? Yeah. So, I mean, well, you have to understand the importance of a paycheck, right? Like you get a paycheck at your W-2 job. And if you pay yourself as a business owner, then you'll see it as a business, right? And you won't be playing business. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait, you know, wait, say the difference between those two, because I know when you said that, when you went to your uh, mastermind, I was like, oh, that's good. That's yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us, you know, and this is for all entrepreneurs, right? I could say black entrepreneurs or people of color, but overall, all entrepreneurs, a lot of people are playing business, right? Business like B-I-D-N-E-S-S. -S. We playing business, right? But we're not actually having a business, and when you're really thinking about a business, even when you're in a private practice and you may only be the only employee that you have, you need to start giving yourself a consistent paycheck so it can feel the same way as it feels for your W-2 job. You know, you feel committed to your W-2 job. Like, well, I got to make sure I get there. I got to make sure I see these clients and give my best. You want to feel that same kind of commitment towards your private practice. And then if you're able to do that, you're able to figure out ways to help it grow and then ultimately scale to, you know, higher heights. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Because I mean, we yeah. I, the biggest, I'm going to say obstacle is two big obstacles that we know of because we've been in this, I'm going to say investment game for a long time. And when I'm talking yeah. about investment, at least on this call, we ain't talking about trading people. That's for a whole nother conversation. Yeah. What we're talking about is investing, investing in you. ourselves, <laughs> tangible and intangible, right? Yeah. So um it's, it's a, I think it's a mindset block that a lot of clinicians, but business owners have in yeah. terms of, I don't have the time. And I believe that we make time for what we actually really want. Yes. And then money probably is the biggest one, not to negate the fact that we are, I guess, in a halfway declared, <laughs> maybe uh -huh. recession. And, and we know we in one, but have to be your life. Yeah. Declared, uh -huh. You know? And so let's, let's go backward. Right. Cause okay. I think that money is a big topic that people are yeah. ashamed to yeah. talk about, which is why oh, yeah. we invite you into our program. Yeah. Um, what is cash flow? Like, what is it? Yeah. So, I mean, from the basic, you know, standpoint and definition of ca cash flow, it literally is the movement of cash in and out of your business, right? That's all it is. The movement of the movement of cash in and out of your business. Now, really want to talk a little bit more about the why, <laughs> right? So cash flow um, as a CEO or a person who's really being, you know, a, a person in business, you must know your numbers, right? You need to know like how much does it cost in order to operate your business, right? And we need that for predictability and stability. So that's why I say like thinking about like, why do we have our W-2 job? We have our W-2 job because now we understand when we're going to get paid, from where we're going to get paid, Right. Um, that's very important. And we understand how much we're going to get paid. Right. So that's how you understand in your, your W-2 job. Right. You understand how much. Right. You understand where. Right. The bit they're going to give it to you. And then you understand the win. So you have to create that same type of context inside of your actual business. Right. Like how much does it cost for me to operate my business? So that's number one. Right. Put that in, in your mind. Write that down in your notes. How much does it cost? To operate my business, whether that's rent, um, you know, whatever it's going to be, like rent for office spaces, EHR, whatever it's going to be, understand the how much part. After you understand how much, you also want to understand where does your money come from? And this is the area that I see um, as maybe more of the struggle. And I know that it's in DTA. Um, actually, Dr. K has like a great like, um, uh, I guess, an Excel sheet or something like it's, like it's a it's, it's a formula to actually help you understand these things. Um, but I think people don't stick on it long enough. 
right? They probably go to it and never like like look at it again. They look at it because it's attached to the dream schedule. So that, yeah. let me just make an announcement for yeah. those who are alumni watching and new students. When we get to that dream schedule and something that I've started to incorporate even in my podcast episodes is let me be clear. Y'all know when I'm yeah. doing a disclaimer like that. I want to be clear. Ideal schedule takes time. And one of the things that I just put out on a recent podcast, thanks to our conversations that we've had over the last like one to two years about just um, actually I'm going to embed another disclaimer um, in terms of like themes that you've seen. Because when Dr. Roche meets with our community clients, because they get the opportunity to do certain things with her, um, she doesn't disclose their personal things. Like we made sure to put up those boundaries because I want them to feel safe talking about something that's very vulnerable to them because sometimes they don't want to say it to their coach. Mm -hmm. But they rather mm -hmm. say it from far, one far removed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but I do check in with her and say, hey, what are the themes that I could enhance in our program? And one of the things that I've started saying now is everybody's going to go through a different season. In mm -hmm. certain seasons, even if I've been in private practice for 10 years now, there's going to be ramp up seasons. They're going to be slow down mm -hmm. seasons, depending on the stream of income that I'm choosing to put my time toward. Mm -hmm. So, one year I could be working five days in private practice. The next year I could be working one. The next year I'm pregnant. I'm working none. Yeah. You got to know what season of your life you're in <clears> to <throat> determine your schedule. And ideal schedule never ends because you're going to be abundant at different levels. Right. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, and so it, I was saying you're starting place. You know, and I, if you developing your financial goals, the first financial goal that you're trying to hit is making enough money to operate the business. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the simplest thing. Right. So if you need a thousand dollars, you're like, how many clients do I need to see to make a thousand dollars? And that's just for operating expenses. Right. Now, this can take, you know, you guys can get there very, very quickly. You may already be there. Um, but that's the, the main first like financial goal. The second financial goal is to start looking at how much, you know, can I do I need to make for the expenses of my household? Now, that's different, right? Like operating the business. Now we're looking at our personal and saying it costs six thousand dollars for me to operate my household. So I must make six thousand dollars. So the question you have to ask yourself is how many clients does it take to get there? Right. So you always have to ask yourself, how many clients does it take? which means that you need to know how much um, is the average client giving you, right? So let's say your private pay fee is $150. Um, however, you also are having insurances. So now your insurance pays $85, let us say. So that means that your actual average per client is maybe closer to like $100 or $110, Right. So you want to make sure you're thinking of it like that from the average and not from the top um, area of like, oh, I'm making 150. Right. That's or good. even you could think about it even from the lowest, saying 85. If 85 is the lowest that you ever go, think of it from that capacity. You mm -hmm. know, well, that's good, because when you reference, I know that you've seen the like the wealth dream schedule. And I just yeah. want to put a tip out there. Um, she mentioned pace, but also go at like in terms of like just not people, but program. Go at your pace with making sure that you look at every worksheet on the workbook. So if you're yeah. familiar with Excel or Google Sheets, you will notice if you watch the video, which is very brief, it'll mm -hmm. show you the ideal schedule. And I think, again, just speaking of mindset, people get so caught up in, oh, what's my uh, vision going to be in like yeah. one to five years? But when it comes down to cracking those numbers and people not liking math, but I'm like, if you could do addition, subtraction and division, we good, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I really need you to look at as you, and I'm going to say this for future, as you increase your rates, this is why a money date is important. Mm -hmm. You want to continue to refine the number that Dr. Roche is referencing because this mm -hmm. happens time and time again. We may not just clearly put um, a client that used to pay 75 and boost them up to 150. Now, if that's the clientele that you can do that with, that's fine. But yeah. most clinicians do it at a stepwise level. Right. So you may have three clients at 150, two clients at 125, one client at 75, hell, one client 50. I don't know because mm -hmm. you one day did a, a like a all over the place sliding scale. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you have to refine that number because your average is going to change. And if you're not keeping track of it, it's actually going to take you longer to save up that money that you just referenced because mm -hmm. you're not tracking your numbers correctly or you're going to spend it thinking it's access. Mm -hmm. It's not access money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, so true. Um, so you, you have to track your numbers. I can't say this, um, you know, enough. 
Um, one of my uh, business coaches says, know the data, uh, bring the data, not the drama. Right. Absolutely. Bring the data, not the drama. So what does that mean? So the data is the actual numbers. Let's look. So when somebody says, how much do you make per um, what what is your average client bring in? You actually know it is one hundred and ten dollars. You're not like, um, I think I feel it's maybe around like you don't say that, you know, oh, no, it's one hundred and ten. You know mm -hmm. the number because mm -hmm. the drama is that I think I feel and not really truly knowing. Mm -hmm. So you must like, you know, you know, if you need to say ouch to yourself, say ouch and say like, OK, let me get on it. Right. Because mm -hmm. if it was who you were before today, you can make a change. Yeah. And be somebody different, yeah. Right. And start knowing like the start knowing your numbers. So, you know, I would say today is your day to see schedule your money date. When is that going to be the way that you have an actual client in your calendar? Schedule a date that is just for you to look over your numbers and now, now most people will ask me, like, how often should I do this? You know, it's really going to be up to you, right? Like, how often do you want to know where your money is, is going, right? How often do you want to make money, right? And if it's every day, then maybe you should look at it every day, you know? Now, if it's every week, then maybe you look at it every week. So it's going to be up to you or every two weeks, similar to when you're getting a paycheck. You may think of it like most people get paid every two weeks. And that's when I want to go look at my numbers. And that's when I want to do some transfers from my business account to paying myself, um, you know, make paying anybody else that I need to pay. So you want to choose that, you know, how whatever feels good to you. Mm -hmm. If you have a CPA or a tax professional meeting once a month is something that I did on my later years of being in business. But if you're in your early years, I would say learn how to do that now. Right. You know, what I'm and saying? you like, talk about that in terms of investment mindset, because yeah. Some people are looking at it. We've talked about ROI a lot. And ROI yeah. is when you get something back, a return on your investment. Yeah. But sometimes as a growing, budding um, entrepreneur to business owner, because business owner is nothing but a mindset. Yeah. Some people are looking at it looking at it as money going out versus you know catching IRS and money situations now. <laughs> yes, right. And so that, that's why it's important, like before you leaving your job and stuff like that, or even if you're at your job right now, um, that your W-2 job, your W-2 money is funding your business, at least in the beginning. So you want to put certain investments out there, like, you know, having a um, CPA in particular, somebody who knows how to manage businesses, right? So like not just a regular tax professional, it could be a tax professional, as long as they are a person who deals in business, honestly. Um, but if they're not a person who deals in business, like they just like, yo, run of the meal person who just do your taxes every single year you may want to start looking into someone different, okay. right? Because you need somebody who'll be willing to meet with you monthly just so you can go look over your numbers. It's especially if you're a person who needs that accountability, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not gonna look at your numbers by yourself and you want them to make sure that you're putting away enough in taxes, um, that not at the end of the year, right? We're, you know, we're in January and now we're tax season is here. And so now you can't even make any decisions, right? Wait, so that again, mean, tax season is here, especially yeah. for those of you who got a corporation. It is not April 15th. Yes, we ain't tax yes. professionals, but we letting you know, if you wait exactly. until after March, that's all I'm going to say, check your dates in your states yes, and with the exactly. IRS. But it, exactly, it's here yeah. already. <laughs> right. Tax season is here. It's right. It's here. And because we're in January, especially as a business, you know, you should have made your decisions in December. If there was something that was going to help you not um, pay as much in taxes, that was a decision that you needed back then. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why if you're talking to um, a CPA on a very regular basis, then you know how to make different moves. Is this the time for me to, um, you know, buy something in my business? Is this a time for me to just chill and wait before I make that um, make that decision? These are things that you can talk to somebody it would be kind of like your partial CFO, right? CFO would be like a finance officer, right? Mm -hmm. So you, they would be that person to help you make financial decisions, mm -hmm. right? Your partner may not be that person for you, yeah, right? But you well, I brought this question up because you are talking about CPA stuff. And yeah. even though we're talking about cash flow um, for business owners, especially in private practice, this is a very loaded question. So I'm just going to read it for those who are probably tuning in later or the podcast. Um, is there a percentage that we should be paying ourselves? I've seen 20% go as high as 70% of what comes in. So I'm, I'm just first going to answer more as a disclaimer. Yeah. Yeah. In DTA, I actually or any of my programs, I actually never answer this question 
Because the one thing that I will tell my clients is if you've done what Dr. Roche just spoke of that we teach in DTA, understand your numbers, put a simple Excel sheet together or Google Sheets together, have a running list. And this is just like a bonus for those who ain't in DTA. Have a running list of your clients. I'm just going to give you all those. So get a pen and paper right now. <laughs> yes. Make a list of all of your active clients in one column. I hope you visually going to follow me because DTA students got this. And in, in the next column, you're going to put the frequency of how often they come. Weekly, bi-weekly, once a month or as needed is typically the, the frequency, right? And then what is the whole reimbursement? Now you can divide that up into copay versus cash pay or reimbursements. But bottom line is you have to know how much does each session pay? And then in the last column, you should add up approximately, if this client comes at the frequency consistently, how much am I getting from John every month, from Sarah bi-monthly or whenever their frequency is, Right. What mm -hmm. I did, because this is where I got to take my hands off. If you know the data and you can give your CPA or tax person a rough estimate of whatever that number is, because it's going to determine your monthly. OK, mm -hmm. then I take that number to my CPA and they do their numbers related to my S Corp status. Some of y'all are W-9. Some of y'all are nothing. We got a bigger, mm -hmm. I don't want to say problem, but we got some startup situation issues. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so it's a loaded question because it really depends yeah. on. Do you have W-9 contractors? Do you have employees? What kind of corporation or entity structure do you have? That's mm -hmm. why I personally will choose not to answer that question because yes. that number could fluctuate. Yes. So I don't so, know if you have anything to add or. <laughs> but yeah, I, I would agree. Um, I would agree that it depends, right? Ultimately, it depends. Now, I will say like some basic standard industry um, areas is that like a good thriving business is like usually their payroll is around 30%. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so write like that, that down, everybody. Payroll yeah. and and who's in the payroll, Doctor Rocher? And who's in the payroll is going to be you, <laughs> and like whoever your employees are. Thank you for saying you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sometimes yeah. you will calculate that percentage. Yeah. And I've seen like, we spoke on this on the boot camp. We'll say we'll yeah. see people in Facebook groups and stuff say, "Oh, my business is profitable." And I and I remember one boot camp two years ago. Yeah. I had the clinicians like do the numbers, but I didn't announce who the person was because I didn't yeah. know who they were. But yeah, they yeah. said something like, "I had eighty thousand dollars profit." But they made like 110. And I'm like, so if that includes operating expenses, what did you yeah. actually pay yourself? Because right. that means yeah. that you didn't have any profits. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then people don't really understand what profits are. Right. And so mm -hmm. one thing that I also suggest for people to have, especially new business owners, I, I'm really into QuickBooks, you know, get yourself QuickBooks. Um, and I don't know, maybe Dr. TK has a link. We have, it. We have a link in there and then we talk about it on calls. And then if okay. they connect with Marissa or go and walk, go back and watch that call, we talk about it as well. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, just going to QuickBooks is amazing because it really helps for new business owners who are maybe doing something that they shouldn't be doing, which is called co-mingling, which means is like, you know, um, you know, combining your personal income and your business income together. Right. So we don't want that to be happening. But if you are right, no worries. QuickBooks will help you through that. OK, for the very beginning. And um, what you will get is called a profit and loss um, statement. Right. They have what are um, sometimes people will just say P&Ls, just using the um, acronym P&L. And so a profit and loss statement tells you exactly what your profits are. Now, profits are not just everything you made in the business. And I think that's where people get confused. Profits are whatever you made in the business minus the expenses, right? So if this month you made $10,000 and your expenses are $8,000, right? And your expenses can include paying yourself as well. Then your business was profitable at $2,000, right? So you want to understand those numbers um, because a lot of times we think that income just coming in is, is profit, but that's not necessarily profit. So you make sure you have to do the minusing the expenses part. No, that um, that is really, really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, because most people don't think about profit in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, and that also helps you what's going to be what is going to be taxable. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get taxed on the profits of the business. So if you made two thousand dollars, then that's what you put 20 percent away um, into. I usually call your business savings account for taxes. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll have that already set up. Now, one other thing that um, comes up. So not only do I feel like people are, are really a, not there are a lot of times unsure of like how the money is growing in their business. Right. But they also don't understand like the when part, like when is money coming in? So particularly for therapists um, or like 
coaches and consultants, but I would say mainly therapists because we also are usually taking insurance. Insurance is interesting because though you may see a client week one, you may not get paid until week three, right? And that is dependent on how um, good are you at putting in the claims to get pay reimbursed, right? So that's what the area, you know, that I noticed. So that's why you have to have really, um, I would say the best ideal schedule is having a money date every single week because it can also be your day that you look over the money, but you also can put in all the claims for your insurance so you get reimbursed within a two-week period of time or whatever it, it's going to be, depending on the insurance company. Mm -hmm. But you want to make sure that you see that. And so I often tell people to even look at it, like, think about it week one, like, who do I see? Week two, who do I see? Week three, who do I get, like, who's going to pay, get paid for? How much am I going to make? Because that can help you um, balance out your um, your cash flow a lot better as well. Yeah, I was gonna say what I'll do on the show notes of this podcast and YouTube, but I'll also link it up on Instagram today. I'm going to link up. It's an older podcast, so you would have to do a lot of scrolling. It's mm -hmm. called "How Did I Misplace Fifty Thousand mm -hmm. Dollars?" And I know that you were living through this with me, along with mm -hmm. like a few postdocs at the time. But just get just to give people a summary. But I would encourage you to go listen to that episode, even if you don't have a group practice. Is one remember the Excel sheet I just explained. So yeah. one of the things that I started doing after this incident that I'll give you a summary of is that I started to track which insurance they had and then around and about approximately when they would pay. Like from yeah. the day that I submitted my bill, if it's accepted, meaning I got I to understand claims, right? Through my yeah. EHR or a biller um, that, okay, MHN reimbursed between 45 and 60 days. And so to play it safe for me, I would always say 60. I don't say 45, yeah. right? I would also notice that certain insurance panels if you're on them during the fourth quarter, they need to get those off for the IRS. So I would notice that mm -hmm. one insurance panel in particular, all of a sudden they would start reimbursing me every seven days, but don't use the same rule of thumb for every panel because every panel is mm -hmm. different. So yeah. um, Dr. Roche said this in her intro that she used to serve veterans, right? Yeah. Um, my whole group practice was serving veterans. I had like eight postdocs or something like that. And um, they had told me when I signed the contract, so don't just sign your name without understanding your payment agreement, they had said that we will get reimbursed um, 60 days. But what I didn't really truly understand back then, you know, is that it will be 60 days only after they accepted the report, not from the date that I submitted oh, wow. the first version of the report. Right. Yeah. So this is the same thing for billing. So fast forward months and months and months later. This is why it's important to have a reserve. I'm telling y'all I made all the mistakes for y'all. Don't do it. And I'm very transparent with it. Right. Yeah. Um I had realized that like, I cannot go with integrity in terms of like not paying my team members, right? Yeah. And they had no idea what was going on. I told them later. So instead of paying myself, which I won't want anybody to do, yeah, I, made, I took money out of my pot to pay them. I was still seeing clients, but every money that I got even from private practice or other streams of income, mm -hmm. I was paying them somehow. And I would just yeah. pay myself. What I found over time, it equated out to way more than 50K is the reason why I said I lost or misplaced 50K is because they were getting paid and I wasn't simply because A, I didn't understand the frequency of how I was really getting paid, right? Based off of the acceptance of the note, AKA the report. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, in the state of California for a corporation, you got to pay them at least once a month. Mm -hmm. Postdocs can't get paid um, like W9. They also got to get paid W2. Yeah. So I didn't even understand um, that there will be extra taxes taking yeah. out of a check that I got to pay out of pocket. So I'm just yeah. highlighting this not to instill fear. Let me be clear, because this mm -hmm. is why some people don't want to hire employees. There are plenty of benefits of hiring people, which I won't go into today. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Roche's point of tracking your money, creating a money date, I would say in the beginning, make it a habit to do it once a week, make a money Monday or a money Friday, mm -hmm. or better yet, the last day of the week that you're doing all your notes because in simple practice, at least your notes are now connected with the submission of your billing. If you do insurance, make that your money date and just run your numbers. Mm -hmm. Because if you do the reason we also say it weekly, you can catch the mistakes earlier yeah. versus waiting until the following year. And then you got all these taxes and you cannot go yeah. back and change it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and especially if you know that you're going to get paid with the 60 day um, lag time, shall I say? then even more so why your reserves needs to be two to three months. 
Right. And so that's why, like, when you're deciding to, like, leave your W-2 job or if you are intending to leave your W-2 job, you want to make sure that you're stacking that kind of money away at this time. That's what I say your W-2 job is there to fund your business desires. Mm -hmm. Right. So making sure that, you know, you're putting that money together mm -hmm. as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so I want to switch gears for a little bit. I know we got like 10 mm -hmm. more minutes. Um, as a therapist, we tend to probably stay in our heads more than regular people because <laughs> we mm -hmm. analyze people and things, everything that breathes on yeah. us. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about even with the level that you're in right now, making multiple six figures like in a year as like mm -hmm. being very diversified? Yeah. Um, why do you choose to continue to invest in yourself, whether it's podcasts, books, going to events or joining programs? Like, why do you see that as important? Yeah. Like, so, you know, I kind of mentioned in the beginning, um, you know, you take on the pace of those that are around you. Right. Um, and so, and, and it's an acronym and I'll go ahead and go through the acronym real quick, but, you know, I always tell people to check your, your pace. So check your P check out the people that you're around. Right. We say that we're the average of the five people that we um, hang around the most. So I, I invest in myself initially for masterminds for the people that are around me. Like I was saying, like being connected to Dr. TK as a friend, right? She was just my friend initially. It made me get my dissertation done sooner. It, it made me end up getting licensed. Um, you know, there's people in our class right now that were in the same class as us who are not licensed. And I've been licensed going on 10 plus years at this point. It's been a long time, right? So think about that, right? So that's why you want to get connected to the right people. So you check your the people that you're around. But secondly, you check your A, which is your alignment. And so alignment to me is like the vertical area, somebody who's doing better than you, right? So though, like they say, like success leaves clues. So if success leaves clues, then that means like I need to look at a business coach, right? So I connect myself with a business coach who knows more than me. So yes, like Dr. TK has already said, she's made all the mistakes. So if I talk to somebody who's already made the mistakes, then they could help me, you know, um, not hit the mistakes, right? Not, like go around different potholes in business um, and not have to experience that. So that means instead of like years of not making money, let's say, or making a lot of mistakes, now I'm in a place that I'm profitable right away because I'm talking to the right person um, and they already know something that I don't know. And yes, I could go on YouTube and try to find all the information and do it on my own or talk to my friend who already is a business owner. You know, you have all these other things. However, like they're not going to teach you the way that a structured business coach is going to teach you. Right. So that's why you have to align yourself with the business coach and then also align yourself with the father. I don't know who you who you serve, but are the universe who that is. Um, but you also keep yourself in alignment there because I feel like that's where your faith lies. And that's where your um, energetic like manifestations are going to come from, too. Um, but then also check your C, which is your choices. Right. So you check your choices because every choice that we make is either going to bring us toward our goal or away from our goal. So whether that's even a choice to invest in ourselves or to eat right, right? Like I always talk about eating because that's where my struggle lies. You know what I'm saying? I got a good money situation, but I'd be like, how do I want to eat? I went to see Darius Cooks yesterday and he had a lot of a seven course meal. And I was like, I'm supposed to be on a diet, but I'm making a choice right now that I'm going to enjoy. That's my choice, right? I might have to, you know, recover later. <laughs> But it's every choice that we make, right, is to go towards our goal or away from our goal. And so I think that's important to, that our choices are still also molded by the people that we are around, you know, and like the environment that we are around. Right. Sometimes you just need to be in the room of an environment that shows success. And then E is like checking your expectations. Right. Uh, because like whatever we expect is what we will actually manifest. So, you know, making sure that even when you're investing in yourself into a business coaching program, that you're already seeing who you're going to be at the end of this program, right? That's why this DTA starts off with a whole ideal vision experience, because you need to make sure that you're going to commit to that girl, right? Or that that woman or that man, I don't know who you're going to be, but, you know, who's that girl who's going to break up with her old self? The self that wasn't making as much money, the self that was feeling burnt out, the self that was having that scarcity mindset and who's and be able to turn into the new self, which is the one who is abundant, who doesn't even worry about money, attracts the right type of client, knows who their client is, knows their numbers, recognizes like, oh, I'm about to grow into a group practice. 
you want to be able to be that girl. And so that's why you invest in yourself now so you can get there faster. No, that's good. And then like, because you kind of said something and it made me think about, you said it earlier too, like accountability. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to end with talking about accountability to yeah. thyself. And so yeah. usually I meet two different types of clinicians, whether it's DTA or any other scaling program that I have is that, especially in our mastermind, students say, oh, you know, I'm going to do an implementation year. And one of the things mm -hmm. that came up um, for them that I brought up is, yeah. you know, we're going to, we go to webinars, we go to workshops, we go to live events. Yeah. Sometimes there's a offer at the end to do something else. Right. Mm -hmm. And some people make the choice if they're aligned with the decision to sign up for something. Cause that's all, that's the only people that I want to DTA are the people that are aligned. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't, you're not, I ain't forcing your hand, you know, it's yeah, just, yeah. if you feel connected, then you do it. So yeah, there are some people who make that choice. And then there's some people who know that the choice is good for them. Yeah. But they say, I'm going to do it on my own. Can you speak to understanding what kind of learner you are? And then if you decide to sign up for a program, how do you be accountable for yourself to like show up and be the best student? Because some people can sign up and just say, I'm gonna take this course and then don't implement nothing. Yeah. So I'm just going to say this. Uh, one of my business friends, he ended up saying that oftentimes people are addicted to education but allergic to execution. I was like, say that again. That was good. You know what I'm saying? You could be addicted to education, but allergic to execution, right? And so, and, you know, and we all may find ourselves in certain areas like that, right? Like you see something online, there's all these ads and you're like, ooh, I, I need to learn, learn, learn. I'm gonna go to this boot camp, this boot camp, and you're learning, learning, learning. I'm gonna go to this YouTube and go into YouTube crazy, right? But then you get allergic to actual execution. And I think a lot of that happens because of focus. It's really because of focus. You need to have like one area that you're deciding that you're going to focus on, right? So you need to say like, hey, I'm, I'm committed to DTA in this season, right? So I got to give myself the six to 12 weeks or whatever it is of straight focus on this, right? And I'm going to focus it and I'm going to work it till I can't work it no more. So you look into the program and you say like, what are all the resources that I have in this program? You know, is it, you know, like to talk to her or to talk to somebody or to come to the coaching calls, whatever it is, I need to commit, put those things on my calendar to do that. The second commitment you want to make is whatever else is out there in the world that you possibly was going to sign up for that you unsubscribe. Right. You know what I'm saying like unsubscribe to multiple emails constantly like, um, you know, berating you with buy this, buy this, buy this or this is the best way. This is the best way, because oftentimes you'll find yourself like buying more and more things that really are not even necessary for your life. And you don't even have any time to even incorporate it in your life. And they overlap. Because and they we, overlap. I call it swipe happy. When yes. We swipe yeah. happy and we don't take our time to actually do an assessment as we do with new clients, the same yeah. way we're supposed to be doing it for our business. Right. We'll mess around and then so I, I've done it. Like where I'm like, hey, I'm about the same, we've all I'm been there. The same program. We, yeah, we have all been there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're speaking from experience yes. <laughs> and recognizing, like, hey, I didn't take advantage of that of that particular course or you know, something that's really simple, right? And I, and I do believe, and this is just my, um, you know, my, uh, you know, testimony of life or whatever, right? But, you know, I've gone through a multiple business coaches and some of them are amazing and some of them are not as great. And sometimes the coach is okay, but the program wasn't really aligned with who I was. Um, and so for me, like, it's very important for me to be able to see, you know, a coach that has organization because that'll keep me focused, right? I need to know what I'm doing on week one, week two, week three. That's one thing that helps me, right? Maybe because I'm a student at heart, right? And so it feels very understandable to me. Um, another thing that I like to see is, you know, like I, I've, I've purchased courses. I told her this, I purchased courses and it, and it's like the person have just gone live and it don't even look cute. It's not even like a good. Okay. Can, can, sorry. That was, that, I got another. So <laughs> can you emphasize, cause I know I, I yeah. overdo it at times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. it's true to me, but I want people to understand that because sometimes you're investing in something and people literally out here throwing together stuff. And I really take my time. Oh, yeah. To make sure that it's user friendly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, well, yeah, you, I mean, for one thing, um, you know, uh, Dr. K does like ask for feedback oftentimes, you know, I, I've been with her for, you know, all the years of this program, even being a thought to, to now being in ex existence and execution. Right. Um, but you know, she takes feedback and she actually implements all the feedback. So she'd be like, Oh, they might be too long. I don't, they might not have that much time. Let me, let me re-record this to make it shorter and make it very succinct and straight to the point. Right. So already that's going to be a way better. Um, you know, I, I I wish I don't even need Dr. DK's program, but I was like, dang, I wish your program existed when we were getting started. So pretty much all of the business coaches that we have all we've been in and masterminds that both of us have been in. She's taking what has been good and kind of throwing away the stuff that we really didn't like and mm -hmm. created DTA. Right. So like, you know, DTA may be whatever, a few thousand dollars. But what's incorporated inside of like DTA is the tens and thousands of dollars that we have paid to become who we are right mm -hmm. and understanding like you know that you need all of this so some people are not like it's pretty in dta right the 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 program itself looks pretty and it's organized um for you to be able to go through the steps that you need so you want to look at all that kind of stuff you know there's a lot of areas of support as well the fact that there's actual coaching calls um, also makes it um, really helpful. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and get those questions answered. And I just really suggest like, just, you know, try your best to implement because if you're implementing, then you're going to have questions while you're in the program. Yeah. So something, if you decide to implement afterwards, oh, you get busy or whatever the case is, you're not going to be able to get the same answers, you know, that you need it because you're not going to be in the program the same way. Mm -hmm. And everybody always says, I'm going to go back to it. Honestly, you ain't going to go back to it. You won't get distracted with something else. You know what I'm that saying? That was your habit during the program because you show your deck yeah. when yes. you first sign up. It's kind of like a New Year's resolution. That's why they don't work. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm like, go in there. My first instruction is do the welcome message and please watch Unleash Your Inner Boss because that's that's specifically talking about taking responsibility for your success. It's yeah. not like, I know my program is good, but yeah. you have to show up to work the program. Yes. Oh, you yeah. Know? Right. Yeah. So, so take some time, you know, with, with your, your inner self, your, your father, you know, take some deep breaths and say, let me show up as my best self when I just decide to join this program as well. Yes. So I did want to make a like I made it last week, but I just for anybody who did not watch day four, um, Dr. Roche will actually be in the cohort, I believe the end of February, there is a yeah. coaching call. So we're going to send like all the reminder emails and then whoever's in DTA, we've updated the link today. You can register for all of the uh, cohort calls between myself, the DTA support coach, which is Shayla um, and Dr. Roche. We may insert more in there, but as of right now, previous bonuses like our um, HR person, you, you have access to all of that information. But if you thought today was helpful, you will really like the more hands-on specific to yeah. private practice discussion that you all not, cause I ain't going to be there. Right. Cause I want y'all to talk, talk <laughs> to Dr. Roche. Um, and then she'll also give you ways of connecting with her. That is very special um, and curated for our community. But just to give you an idea of the access in terms of our vault that you have is that she's done previous workshops on we call it the wealth factory. So like, mm -hmm. how do you um, create a 401k um, on your own as a private practice owner so that we can remove the fear of that's why I can't leave my job if that's your choice. Mm -hmm. If that's the only thing that's holding you back, <laughs> we got different ways around that, <laughs> right? Yeah. But it's more of a mindset. And this year, we're heavily going to be focusing on actually in all of our programs and live events, cash flow, because mm -hmm. per my conversation with Dr. Roche, that's where we've had probably the most thorough conversations mm -hmm. because she's hearing it from directly the horse's mouth, which is our clients talking to her mm -hmm. because there's only so much that's presented to me because also we're mm -hmm. in a group. So I understand it might look different, but one yeah. thing I do want to close out with outside of go sign up for DCA at drtk.com forward slash links is we do accountability. So even though you may mm -hmm. not want to talk to myself, your coach or Dr. Roche, even on a group call, we send out a monthly accountability form and I am asking you to tell us every single month what is going on in your business. The only way that I can implement feedback is if the student gives it to me. And mm -hmm. if I think about it and attach it to graduate school, I remember me and her have been professors and I've been um, 
professors also at like community colleges. And it just tickles me, more so baffles me. When stu I hear students, I'm walking in class, I don't know who they talking about because I'm adjunct in the evening and they will be talking trash about a professor. And so I'll say, hey, did you do the, the midterm evaluation? Oh, uh, they don't do nothing with that. I'm like, who told you that? So I make yeah. it a personal development um, lecture where I say, you know, they call us in the damn office. Yeah. They go over the feedback. They yeah, give they us, the, they don't, they detach your names, but they give us this beautiful report at all institutions that I taught at. And they tell us what our scores are, like on a scale of five or mm -hmm. 10. They give us the outstanding feedback, especially if it's constructive. And mm -hmm. it's up to us to go and implement it for the rest of the semester. But if you just keep checking off, you either you don't fill out the accountability form or you mm -hmm. check off at a college, everything is good, everything is good. But then you're trying to get rid of the professor. Those two don't match. Yeah. So if you want something to be implemented and it, it and if it's within the structure of DTA, of course, right? Um, give us feedback. But also I want to know if you win it in your business. <laughs> like I need to know I'm your coach. I care. So- any uh, lasting words you want to share about money mindset, cash flow, investing in yourself, even beyond the boot camp to mental health providers? Um, you know, uh, just do the work. Like, you know, believe in yourself, you know, believe in yourself, because I really that's where it really starts. Um, I think that a lot of our our struggles are the fact that we're really not believing in ourselves. Right. The reason why we may not invest is because we're really believing that we're unsure if we're going to do the work. Right. Um, you know, the reason why we may not look at our numbers. Right. Because we almost like fear of like, are we really successful? You know, if I look at it, I, I'm scared that I might not be as successful as I'm thinking I am. Right. So make sure you just like take the time to like, you know, believe in yourself. And once you actually understand where you are, then you can make a plan to where you want to be. Right. That's just how it works. Right. So we have to like locate ourselves. We know this because we talk to our clients about this. Basically, you got to know where you are right now. Acknowledge it. You know, whatever it may be, acknowledge that. And then you can make a plan to where you want to be, especially with the beginning of 2023. Uh, right. You know, they they people saying worry free in 2023. Be your new be a new me in 2023. It's all kind of different things. Right. But this is your opportunity in 2023. Right. Mm -hmm. To really get started in January, the best way to have the best, um, you know, outcome that you've ever had. Right. You can literally 10x your uh, business. OK. See accountability in 2023. See, it's all, you know, what I'm saying all of it. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So you got to go ahead and be accountable to you. Yes. So I plan on bringing Dr. Roche back because we got a lot of stuff to discuss. We haven't done a, a co-podcast. I think this is her first time coming on a boot camp, though. Yeah. And that is. was it's funny because like, see, that's why you need people in your circle. My circle was also my husband. Like that, that's her BBH. Right. Beautiful black <laughs> husband of Dr. Right. <laughs> <laughs> because last week, y'all, she wouldn't even have a schedule. And he was like, Cause I didn't know what her, I know, I know her schedule Monday, but I don't. Cause you know, she, she's a social butterfly, you know? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. you know, what it'd be fire. And he don't even talk like this, but I'm just amping it up. Right. Cause he watches, <laughs> but I'm like, he was like, you know, who will be fire. And I'm like, who? and he was like, Roche. He was like, they already think that you like off the wall, both of y'all together. Oh my God. And I'm like, you right. Like, so I, I, I said, let me hit her up. Cause Monday is her admin day. Let me hit her up. Yeah. And he hit me back up and here she is. And so, on a scale of one to 10, for those of you who are watching now or on the replay, how did you enjoy Dr. Roche's energy? I really want to invite her back to the podcast at least, because um, this will be a podcast episode, at least like mm -hmm. once a quarter at mm -hmm. minimum. Because, I mean, y'all, for those of y'all who just being introduced to me and or her, <laughs> we just getting started. Yeah, but we got right. half episodes where we I talk mean, this about, went by super fast. I was like, dang. Listen, I'm like, dang, we could sit here and talk for days. Yes. <laughs> this, this is why I'll be on her call, because we'll probably take over like y'all whole day. Like, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> so um, I'll just put the link up here one last time. Um, no, let me see. Hold on for a second. So DTA is open until um, Friday, midnight Pacific Standard Time. OK, um, bonuses have been released. They're on the enrollment page. I do want to be clear. Um, and you've been getting 10 pluses in the box and thank yous and stuff like that. I do want to be clear that um, DTA will not, for those of you who've been attending these boot camps for a while now, because I can see you in my system, <laughs> DTA will not open back until the end of the year. So that means that as Dr. Roche talked about January being the beginning of the year, setting the tone, implementing as you learn, and then of course using our community throughout the end of the year. DTA will not open back up, which means that by the time you actually have the ability to implement what we're teaching, it will be 2024. Mm -hmm. 
So if you want to put your hold, um, put your abundance on hold, that was the name of the podcast episode today. If you want to put your abundance on hold until 2024, join us, <laughs> you know, at the end of this year. But sit down and think and get into my DM. I've had numerous conversations, voice messages with people who have questions about the Academy. The only thing I ask, though, is make sure that you understand the program and that you read the enrollment page because that's why it's there. Okay, so get into my DM if your question ain't on the enrollment page. Okay, but um, that's all I got. So thank y'all so much. Let me put up these so Dr. Rochet can see them. So Ms. Walker, she said, and, and, and you pronounced her name right. Hello, well, people okay. mess up my name all the time, girl. So I was trying. Yeah, <laughs> it's helpful. And thank you, thank you both. You welcome. We got tens. We got tens. We got two point five. We got that extra. And we yes. got those tens, that was some extra. Right? Why yes. be ordinary, y'all, when y'all could what? Throw some extra yes. on and then be extraordinary. Let's go, you know? <laughs> so those of you at DTA, y'all see Dr. Roche, look, all these rhymes, right? Y'all see Dr. Roche at the end of February. If you cannot make it to some of our coaching calls, because that's what was also brought up, because I know some of them were like, oh, my God, I want to see her, like, in the call. Everything will be on a replay, and whatever resources she gives you will be in the portal. So don't feel like, oh, my God, I won't get nothing. We always got you covered, okay? Yeah. Um, so I'll see all of y'all, some of y'all in boot camp, some of y'all probably just in a podcast or something like that. But I love y'all. Shay, I'll hit you up later. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. Bye.